great. Cool. Let's fucking do this, dude. Something from everyone. Episode 49 with Lucas Vitu- Vitulo? V- Vitulo. Vitulo. Yeah, there you go. I almost, I almost switched the I and the U there. I was like, that doesn't sound right. And I had a brain fart in the moment. But yeah, man, we're drumming in Strayview, drumming in OIC, and drumming in As Within, So Without. We've had a busy fucking year, dude. Thanks for coming back. Hell yeah, dude. Um, Glad you were to be here, here episode 11, it was. So now this is episode 49. So we've had almost a year since then. It's been about eight months, I think, is what it was. Uh, and yeah, last time you were here, we were just against that wall, and it was kind of fun for me to go back and look at that episode and be like, damn, this thing has grown. I have gotten a little better at this. I am more confident in this chair, and it all feels a little more natural now. So I appreciate you being brave and being in the <laughs> early beginnings. So yeah, appreciate you coming back to make it happen again. Hell yeah, dude. I'm just, just stoked to be here. Um, I want to dive right in. So I think Strayview is the obvious thing. So if you haven't heard this, I guess... I guess you haven't heard Strayview, you go listen to What's Done is Done is the song name. Yep. Uh, also, go listen to Omen, No I Seen came out, and then As Within has... Burn the Sun, the music video that came out this year. So plenty of stuff to go check out before we get into all this. Um, but it. assume you've listened to all that. Stray of you, dude. So how, where does this thing get going? So you're working with Dave Escamilla, who's formerly of Crown the Empire. And that's like, to me, the nostalgic, like, perfect window of like, right when I was 16 and like, interested in music and able to go to shows. But before I was like, involved in the world and kind of started to taint it for myself. Like, <laughs> it's a real perfect uh, era there. And I assume for you, it's a similar thing. Like, yeah, how do you end up in touch with Dave? And how does the thing come together? Um, so it's actually kind of funny because like, I kind of missed Crown the Empire when like he was like in the band and they were like okay. really big. Um, I was kind of at that point just getting into asking Alexandria. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> um, yep. So, yeah, but I think that, like, so basically how that all happened was, like, um, uh, words. Sorry. Dude, words um, suck down here. I don't know. <laughs> uh, someone, I think Brendan Baker one time was like, yo, when you come down here, words just leave. And I was yeah. like, yeah, that's it. Somehow, yeah. somehow the microphone makes that happen. But um, ain't no thing. So basically, so Dave uh, was doing stuff with um, this kid, Brandon uh, Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. A lot of people online know him as Brandon Muffins. Okay. Um, but... <laughs> You know, is there some story to that that we should know? So I think there is, but I don't really know it to the fullest. So I'll get him I'm in your chair gonna, someday and ask him. I'm just gonna let him rock. Uh, so yeah. so basically, they had like put out a song. Um, I think it was like, it might have been last year. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. it was last year. It was called Escape. Um, I don't think they were gonna do anything else. And then I think, then Dave kind of decided, hey, like we should do this mm-hmm. and make it like, a, like an official band. So. They do that, and then Brandon, who I'm friends with on Facebook, he puts out this post. He goes, drummers with tour experience, where are you at? And I was just like, me, I guess. And they're in Texas, right? Like, it's not a, anywhere near here. This is all remote so far? Uh, so Dave is, Dave is in te- Texas, okay. and Brandon's in New Jersey. So he's like an hour from me. Oh, great. Okay. But yeah, we've basically just been doing everything remote. Hell yeah. Um, and so, then, so I make the comment, and then he messages me. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll entertain this. I was like, I definitely just commented on a whim because I was like, I'm definitely yeah. too busy, but I was like, I'll entertain you. <laughs> that was one of my questions here is, yeah, you've already got enough on your plate. Yeah. And then um, he kind of gave me the lowdown, sent me the track and um, I was like, okay, this is different and I like this and these guys are for real. So I was like, yeah. fuck it. I'll I'll figure it out as we go. You also got the nice overlap where I think if if I am you, I would have been almost like a little starstruck of like, who is this guy? And for you, it's like, yeah, you're right. That by missing the wave, it's a much easier thing where you can recognize that it is someone who has had success and has talent and has been able to demonstrate that talent. But you don't really have the thing of like, oh, that's my hero. I got to, you know, like you, <laughs> yeah. you're able to miss that window, which I think is an interesting thing. But it is a it is a unique thing to come in with a guy like with that kind of history. And it's like, yeah, he has established himself. It's not the same as just starting from scratch. Like it is a a different beginning does it feel different than starting from scratch yeah i think it feels a little different um i think it also is like um kind of the way that we've been like using social media we've been kind of just doing like every post reels and collaborating on it on the post mm-hmm. like all three of us um so that's the way to do it yeah uh, that collaboration thing is so huge of like yes let's use all five of our audiences for this and i think there's also like both that like the post goes to all five of our audiences, but I think there's also a snowball effect, right? So if we know that Instagram is showing us popular posts or TikTok, whatever the fuck platform you want to talk about here, they're showing us posts that have gotten engagement. And when we have five times the audience that think it's five times more views and that yeah, snowballs and it's able to get more interaction through the collaboration. And I think it's a, yeah, a really smart strategy you guys have done to leverage the social media and yeah, take advantage of it in kind of a modern way there. It's, it's hard because social media is just like, it's a chore. Hmm. So 
You got you got to like stay on top of it and keep yourself like accountable. Yes. Um, because if if you don't, you just kind of start to lose momentum. Essentially, yeah. is that something you struggled with? Is like staying staying oh, yeah. engaged with this? Is it hard to sit down and get make yourself film the drum cover or whatever? Oh, dude, yeah, I was like kind of good at it for like a little while. Yeah. Um, I think it was like maybe April to like July, I think, and then I kind of got busy, had other stuff going on, and then like have just been really struggling to get into it, especially like now with like, you know, like having to learn a lot of songs just mm. like for my own stuff. Yep. Um, and then like, you know, having to balance everything else in my life mm-hmm. it becomes like, ah, I really hate learning songs. Playing them is fun, but yep. learning sucks. I have the same thing <laughs> of like, I hate, uh, I've, I forgot to actually I forgot to plug stuff up top. Uh, one of the things, the only thing I'm playing right now is that I'm filming music videos for 2024. So I'm booking that. I'd love for people to hit me up for that. And I'd love to do more VFX projects, more green screen stuff. I really enjoy building these worlds. Uh, and I think to your point of filming drum covers or drum playthroughs, whatever, it's a similar thing of like, I love doing that part. But the idea of sitting down on Sunday afternoon and going, I'm just going to make a cave just to practice making a <laughs> cave and figuring out how to make stalagmites and stalactites and all the different <laughs> rocks and foam moss and whatever. And like, yeah, it's such a tedious thing that is important. I recognize that I should be doing that and that it would benefit me to do that. But it's, yeah, the least fun thing of all to sit down and go, this isn't even going to go anywhere. Like best case scenario, this makes it to my feed. And that's about as far as it might go. There's no client involved. There's no one that I'm working for. It's just for the sake of doing it. And I think it's a similar thing here where it just is a, a tough leap to make that was so much easier when we were 16 and hungry and desperate. And now it's like, I'm still hungry. I'm still desperate, but it's a lot harder to be that hungry and that desperate. Yeah, that was funny, though. I've got to sit down and make a cave. <laughs> it literally is that, dude. It's. Uh, I was just having this conversation the other day where, like, I uh, one of the half hard videos we did a while ago was a house. And so I, I, we were like in the middle of the pandemic when I was working on this. And so I'm like sitting here working on this like virtual house. And at some point in that process, that house felt more real than like my own home to me because I'm like so <laughs> obsessed of this thing and what all the vases should be and how all the details should lay out. And it like, yeah, almost I get like sucked into that. And then I walk around my own apartment. I'm like, wait, didn't I just put a lamp there? Didn't I just like paint this wall? It's like, <laughs> no, you fucking idiot. It's, no, it's digital. It doesn't exist anymore. Um, but it is true. I think that like that is the, is, yeah, it's a similar parallel to you sitting down and having to learn the blast beat pattern or try and get from whatever, 250 BPM to 260 BPM. It's like, it's not fun, but yeah. it is important. Um, I assume that the the band, when you guys form, there's a, a, a like a intentional conversation here of like, hey, if this is going to work, it has to go through social media. It's not going to be a traditional rollout the way we would have seen it 20 years ago. Is that yeah. kind of an intentional design? Yeah, we're kind of trying to like, because you see a lot of bands like kind of pop up and like really util- utilize like TikTok and Instagram mm-hmm. and like those algorithms and like really make some, you know, make some way like really fast. Yeah. Um, so... Excuse me, sorry. Um, so yeah, like that's kind of what we're trying to do, because we kind of can't really do anything else because Dave's like in the middle of the country, yeah. And like, yeah, we're kind of trying to like push him almost so this way kind of draws in, you know, people that know mm-hmm. of him. So yeah, it yeah, it just is kind of complicated for sure, but I think we've been doing a good job. I think you've done a great and, job. Yeah, I think um, I've seen way more clips of you guys recently than I have everyone else and I think that's brilliant. I think the other piece is not just uh the songs. I've seen you guys do individual covers, so drum stuff, guitar stuff. I've seen Dave post like isolated vocal takes. Like, I think you've done really well to get creative with it. Is the other challenge there of like yeah, you could just push the chorus, but there's only so many times you can post this thing before people scroll past it. And yeah. to find ways to revamp that, I think is an interesting challenge there. It's been really hard because it's like we, I think, like feel pretty stale on it because it's just the like we don't have anything else to post really. So mm-hmm. we're kind of, you know, like oh, we got to keep posting this one before we have another song out. So I assume there's more stuff in the works. I'm not asking you to spill the beans or get ahead of yourself here. But like, is there a thought that we could share more of the writing process there? Like, is there a way we can make content that isn't the next song, but isn't this song? Is there some like in between content you can make there? Yeah, I think we've been kind of trying to figure that out. Um, it's kind of like, I feel like hard, though. Like, because, like, Dave and Brandon are both, like, producers. So, like, um, Dave does that, like, full-time, and Brandon does as well. And actually, Brandon does all the production 
on all of our stuff. That's right. I didn't um, realize it was all in-house like that. That's cool. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's kind of been the goal is to just figure out how we can, you know, maximize our strengths and just kind of, you know, and push ourselves. My guess is when you got this song, you got a pretty much finished song and learned it and contributed. But now that you're in the, I assume you're more involved in the writing process, you're able to contribute more. I think that'll hopefully help develop more content, right? I think that's uh, part of it is like once you're attached to the drum part, it's a lot easier to advertise that drum part to other people. Whereas when you're just playing what feels like someone else's song, it's probably harder to get behind the kit and be like, yes, this is me. Where it's yeah. not quite you. I think like, because the dynamic there is a lot different from like No I or like As Within. Um, so I kind of like went into it being like, all right, like they have a pretty solid dynamic going here as far as like them working on stuff together, but remotely. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't want to really taint that. And I'm not great at like, like writing, not like radio songs, but like, I guess like more accessible songs like yeah. that. Um, like I can do it. It's just kind of feels tedious for me for whatever reason. Cause I'm just very ADHD and I want to keep changing it's parts throughout the song. Uh, but like recent conversations, they've been like, cause I've just like some, sometimes like send them stuff that I'm working on. And lately it's just been like, like ass beaters. So yeah, yeah. they were just kind of like, you should write a heavy one for us. I was like, Hell I yeah, can do now that. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I could do that. Hell yeah. Uh, do Dave and Brandon have a long relationship going back or a couple of years? Like this isn't necessarily new to them. I think for them, I think they've like, kind of been working together for about like a year and a half maybe okay um but i kind of came into the picture around like june july okay so uh yeah it's kind of been not like a long time coming but we've been working on it for a bit so. as a, as things do in this industry where yeah six months ago is when it's exciting and now is when it's a present and current. <laughs> uh it's interesting you mentioned that like the more radio friendly songs are tedious to you i think it's a like really uh a really interesting statement where to me that would seem like it's I could understand it to be boring or mindless, but tedious is a really interesting word there where to me tedious would be the blast beats. It would be all the string skipping that I see you post. Like learning that to me seems tedious of like it's not simple. You have to really do it and get it precise and it has to be perfect or else it's wildly wrong. Whereas to me, the the radio friendly songs seem much more digestible. It seems like you could shit one out in an afternoon much easier and it's interesting to that that is the tedious thing and i guess yeah it speaks to our our musical taste but have you ever yeah have you ever found success writing that like where does the tediousness come from i guess for me it's like i tend to get like it's at least when i'm creating like listening is different but like when i'm creating like i like to kind of feel like there's a progression throughout the song rather than like okay i've established a verse and a chorus and then the second verse being pretty much the same as the first, but just with minor changes. For me, I just get like, so like in my head, I'm like, the song is basically just the same after these two parts. Mm -hmm. Like, even if I like make the structure kind of creative, I'm just like, I, I hate this. Even if it's the best verse in the world, it's still kind of three of the same. Yeah. Verse. Cause I'm just like, it's just copy paste, copy paste. And it's like, that's yeah. interesting. I feel the same about photo and video. So I start as a concert photographer is where I think I've spent a lot of my time. Uh, and I, yeah, shot a ton of shows, mostly photograph, primarily photographing shows. And more recently, I guess not necessarily recently anymore, but in the last couple of years, it's become more video and that's become a much more exciting and interesting thing. Uh, and there's a couple layers that I think one of them simply is just financially, like it's much easier to make a living making music videos than it is doing photos and doing portraits and all these little things that have to happen uh, where my line is like, I can do one video a week or I can do five photo shoots a week. And yeah. <laughs> to me, that's kind of a simple choice of like, I get to go yeah, be with my friends one day and then have a week at home to build this thing instead of having to go out and find, yeah, so many different things. But the other side there that I think was more profound for me is I got to a point of photo where it's like, I don't know, I look at someone like Raquel as like my, my Mecca, like my North Star. Like, I just think she's so great at what she does. But the work it took to get from where I was to where I thought she was, was work I didn't enjoy doing anymore. And I think part of that to me was that photos felt tedious in the same way you're describing these parts where I edit this photo and then I'm to the next thing and I'm either copy and pasting or it's just like there's no flow. There's no cohesion here. It's this weird game of like doing a hundred unique elements inside of a project and I think what I'm hearing you say is you like making a whole song that ebbs and flows. And I've really enjoyed that in the video where it's like I get to control the tempo of this whole thing. So instead of sending you one photo and then another photo, I'm sending you a whole experience. And that yeah. to me is a much more 
enjoyable process that I think just aligns with how my brain works. And then, yeah, I guess I've never seen a parallel in music for that. But it sounds like a similar thing to what you're describing of like radio friendly versus, I guess, genty, complicated shit. Yeah, I feel like and that's like definitely kind of the creator's curse. Mm -hmm. I think you like you get to a point where like you you hear something or you like see something enough times and then you're like, OK, cool. I need to like expand further mm -hmm. or else I'm just doing the same thing, essentially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like really kind of, kind of sucks when it, you think about it. It does. But I think, yeah, I think to some degree though, it's about finding the work that you enjoy doing. And it sounds like the gent stuff for, for lack of a better term at the, the prog, whatever the more technical stuff is what you enjoy doing. Whereas to someone else, that would be the most tedious shit in the world where I could imagine. Like, oh, yeah. I have to write like five different parts for this song when I could just write two. Yep. <laughs> and all five of them have to make me mad when I try and learn them yeah. instead of just having an open three, eight pattern or something simple that everyone that I could pick up and play. Right. Like those, I guess that's how I qualify music is like, if I can pick up and play it, then it's simple. And if I have no idea what the fuck's happening, then okay, we're into more advanced music stuff. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. I guess how that, that overlaps there. Yeah. It's about finding the work that is worth doing to you where, yeah, it's, like I said, to me, the photo it wasn't that I didn't love it. It's that the, yeah, the next level of work felt tedious. It was just work that I wasn't willing to do. Whereas yeah. in video, it's like, I'm kind of happy to go make a cave. Like, it's not my favorite way to make a <laughs> Sunday afternoon, but there is some level of tediousness in there that it, like, aligns with me and, like, works with whatever my quirks are, I guess. Yeah. And, yeah, I guess in our in our process, it's about, yeah, finding where what the work is that you're willing to do that other people aren't interested in doing. Yeah. Um, interesting. I never quite thought about it that way. Um <laughs> Is there any hesitation then in like adding one more band to the mix where you are busy, you've involved in so many things and I'm sure that, yeah, we've talked about the music stuff. I'm sure there's personal stuff. I'm sure there's Lucas's own like individual, like if I could make anything in the world, this would be the weird song I would write. And it doesn't have a band, it doesn't have a home, but it is still artistically exciting to you. Was it tough to then add in one more band to the mix knowing how much you have on your plate? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I, it was a big conversation with myself. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, I kind of just like looked at the pros and the cons and I was like, well, these dudes are serious. So yeah. like what, you know, what's one more? <laughs> uh, yeah. And at a certain point, it's a, it's a chance worth taking. Right. Yeah. I think the, uh, what I've what I've learned in myself is like I don't, you don't really know what anything's going to amount to. And it has to be a gut feeling of like this feels good. And I don't know if it's logical. I don't know if it's perfect. And I guess my, the podcast to me is a similar version of that of like. I didn't start this because I had free time. Like, yeah. I, it wasn't like a. I started this going, fuck, there's no way this is going to last for a year. There's just no way I can get this done every week, but it seems fun. It seems like something I want to try. So let's figure it out. And yeah, now I'm a year in and I have figured it out and it has made it happen. I think it sounds like a similar thing here of like, yeah, at a certain point, you got to just make a gut call and be like, I don't know how, but if it wants to work, if it's supposed to work, it will. Yeah. Wait, so it's been like a, a full year? Yes. Yeah. Somewhere around November 20th or so was my first episode. So now oh, we're dude, at 49. Yeah. So I was just short of uh, of one per week. Um, but we're getting there. I'm still, still on pace for 100 episodes by 2025 was my initial goal. Uh, so I got to be a little think, more consistent next week, I next think year. It, I think you'll get it. I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah. It's been a fun challenge. It's been a fun project to like grow and, I don't know, to network with my friends. And I like... I. I was joking. I was with Sentinels last week and they were kind of asking me, you know, why I do this. And I was like, it's selfish. Like, I enjoy talking to you guys. I want to learn about what you're doing and I want to learn about how, yeah, gent versus radio friendly music is also the same as what I'm doing. And it somehow makes me feel more sane in this where I think there's a, a mad scientist element to me. That is, <laughs> if I am just in my bedroom, I'm just making that half hearted house that my own apartment starts to feel foreign. Yeah. Uh, and by having these conversations, it makes me go like, Oh no, like I'm I'm crazy. There's some there's some mad scientist here, but there's a lot more in common with my peers that I'm aware of. Uh so yeah, I've really enjoyed it as that like almost selfish approach of like I, I hope other people have found value. I hope people like you enjoy coming here and chatting, but it is something that yeah, I feel like has really nurtured me and what I want to do as well. Um, I feel like you gotta kind of be a little crazy to to pursue like this industry in any kind of like uh capacity. Mm -hmm. Whether it's like, you know, playing or producing or being you know a content person or an artist manager you know whatever it is it's like you got to be kind of you got to be crazy to some degree there's got to be some kind of mad scientist in you to want to go after that so. there is and i i am very glad you said that because i always have the same thing of like it's a much more logical choice to be a teacher or to go <laughs> be a doctor and not that all of us could have become doctors i guess but like there's a lot more logical career path to to aim for and to pursue and that i think yeah there has to be some screw loose i think my 
my downside there is like, I don't want to sell myself short and be like, all my peers are crazy. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> like there, there are definitely crazy people in our world, but I think yeah. there's a lot of grounded people going, Hey, I know this is ambitious. I know this doesn't make sense, but fuck it. Let's find out why. And I think yeah. there's a, I don't know. I think it's worth, I think by calling everyone weird, I'm like doing myself a disservice. I'm like, yeah. we're not weird. We're brave. Like, no, yeah, a, for sure. There's a entrepreneurial spirit in all of us that is not a unique entrepreneurial spirit, right? We're not necessarily selling a product, but it is a similar business venture in that sense. It definitely is. And I feel like with like today's climate of just like how hard it is to really succeed in a mm-hmm. industry like this, it's like definitely much more ambitious and brave to do. But it's like, Fuck it, you know, you only live once and yeah. life is short. So Yeah. It's exactly that. And I think yeah. it's uh I don't know, I think we can all value offer value to the world differently, I guess is the other way I've looked at it as like um, I guess going back to the earlier point of like finding the work you want to do that aligns with us. Like I, I have worked in schools. I worked in summer camps for a while and I really loved those populations. I loved working with kids and yeah, it was felt like a really valuable uh contribution to society. But yeah, it got to a point where I was like, I'm twenty, I don't have uh I'm um uh, picking picking uh words carefully here is where my my pausing is but i worked in a, a school for kids with autism for a while and then i also worked at a summer camp that i ended up directing for a while uh and so at the summer camp i ended up basically just working with dcf all day right it's all mm-hmm. the things that the counselors couldn't deal with that ended up on my desk uh, and then i go to the school for kids with autism and these were kids who had not found success in public schools and then uh, yeah ended up in a more specialized institution uh and both were climates where i was like if anyone in the world is worthy of my time, it is these people. These people yeah. need me and I can do them the most good. But it's also like I'm 20. Like I don't yeah. I don't have it in me to take on this much weight. Like I need to explore me first. And I guess, yeah, some other version of me might have been happy to do that. But yeah, it's about finding the work that is important to us and relevant to us. And I think then it's like I'm not necessarily helping that population right now, but I would like to believe that by yeah, doing videos and whatever, it's like I'm empowering my peers, I'm empowering other people in a different way. And I don't know. I think we're not doctors, but there has to be some other yin to that yang, right? Not all of us can be fixing open hearts. Like at some point, yeah. someone's got to make you feel good when you are healthy. You do have time. So yeah. I don't know. I don't want to, uh, I have the same thing of like, I'm not a doctor and that makes me feel bad, but it's like, I don't know. We can't all be doctors. We, there has to be some other mad scientist out there cooking up some other stuff for people to enjoy. You can't. And yeah, yeah, it's very true. You know, we can't all be doctors. I, I think I think I would go crazy if I was a doctor. I'd I'll be tell you miserable. what, it'd be hilarious to watch all of us at the Webster <laughs> try and perform a surgery. <laughs> just all of us fucking something up, stabbing someone by accident. Just open heart surgery at the Webster. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> it's, it's clean, dude. They got new bathrooms. <laughs> it'd be yeah. perfect. Yeah, I haven't been there yet, so I, I haven't seen the bathrooms It's pretty yet, cool. But, the, yeah. the mirrors have Bluetooth in them. Which yeah, I saw that. I think is a... Interesting addition. It's kind of weird. It's like you're you're at a music venue. Why do you why do you need Bluetooth and especially in the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It looks cool and it makes me giggle when I go in there. So I guess it adds some value to something. Yeah. Um, what uh, what were like the cons then of adding another band to the project? Where I think if I am if I am Lucas or I, it's Peter, <laughs> if I'm speaking for myself, I guess rather, I feel like I only have so many good ideas. And one thing I uh, I think I've learned from other peers that I've watched is like. If you put out too much content, at a certain point, it gets watered down. Like there is a, a finite amount of good ideas I can put out. And if I have to put out an idea every day, they're going to degrade naturally. Yeah. Like that's just how things work. Like was how are you balancing? I guess that is a better way to phrase that in the context of adding stray view of like, yeah, you are doing that. And I know you're in the studio with no ISC and there's an album in the works there. I assume As Within is working on something. Bands are always, always working on something. Always scheming. Um, was there some, some fear there? Was there some thought of like, how do I keep these things fresh? How do I keep these things separate? Because it's not like, it's not like one's a pop punk project and one's a rap project and one's a beat down, right? They're all yeah. kind of in a similar ballpark. They could be on a tour package together. Like, yeah. how have you approached keeping these ideas separate and keeping them all uh, rejuvenated, inspired, exciting? Um, well, I guess... Outside of creatively, the biggest challenge has been managing my time. Sure. Um, but as far as like creatively, I think that like it kind of works because like right now I'm not really like a primary writer for Stray View. Mm-hmm. Um, that could change or it might not, you know. Or in the context of a beat down song, you could have your two cents, but yeah, it's not yeah. all on your back, I guess. Um, it, with, with As Within and No I. Uh, it gets it gets hard sometimes. Uh, I think um, I really kind of just need to have like a good, uh, you know, jumping off point to start at. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because I, I kind of like do it like where, 
I'm trying to write less riffs or less like crazy riffs with like as within stuff if I'm writing for as within and then no I you know kind of anything goes unless it's like black metal or hardcore yeah <laughs> so you know it's kind of cool to be able to you know do different things I mean as within like I feel like we've been the kind of metalcore more so that has like some of that radio potential mm -hmm. sometimes where there's like the I don't want to say like mass appealing because I feel like no I can be as well but I feel like it's kind of like a different spectrum almost if that more makes easily sense. digestible to more people yeah. maybe I think that I would agree that maybe Less no gent, I is maybe yeah more yeah. niche community of like yeah, a band like In Hearts Wake is a great band, but they're never going to be for everyone. Like, it's too specific, whereas Emotionless and White is so digestible for a, a much bigger audience of people or a much more, uh, yeah, larger demographic of people, I guess, rather. Yeah. Uh, um, is there, is there like a, how are you approaching like writer's block there? I guess I feel like I would get halfway into a riff and there'd be a moment of like, should I even keep going? Is this even as within? Is this no I? Like, how are you, uh, what are you doing in those moments to like keep yourself inspired and keep yourself rejuvenated? Are you someone who tries to just like, run through the writer's block or are you good at like throwing your hands up be like fuck it not today it really depends yeah. honestly it depends if it depends on what i have if i'm like sitting here and i'm like all right i know what i have i know it's really good mm -hmm. uh sometimes i can run through it and you know maybe i'll get like half the song done and even if it like most of it is shit then i'll at least be like okay cool so that's i'm gonna go a different direction from there mm -hmm. um but, yeah, I mean, sometimes it just really depends because I'll go into something, like, into a writing session and be like, okay, I want to write something for No I, and then it ends up being kind of like As Within or vice versa. Yeah. Uh, and then sometimes I'll sit down and I can't get a single idea out. So if I can't get anything out and I can't even get something recorded or if I get something recorded and I'm like, I hate this, <laughs> I'm like, put the guitar down, close my, close my studio. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just go play some video games or something. Yeah. <laughs> is that the, is guitar most of where your like primary songwriting happens? Uh, and then I guess part two of that is like, you mentioned like songwriting sessions. Like, do you plan out time? You mean like sitting with your band or are you like regimented in yourself of like, I'm going to sit down tonight from six to seven and write a song? Um, I guess all of that really depends. Cause like, um, I, well with like, as far as creating, yeah, it usually starts at a guitar for me or if I'm like in a place where like, I'm like, uh, I keep like reusing the same like patterns of like riffing or whatever or like chords. Um, I'll try maybe and like just program guitars as like MIDI because sometimes that'll like make me write stuff that I wouldn't normally write on the guitar. Yeah. But then the downside to that is that sometimes it's like kind of not playable. Yep. So <laughs> gotta kind of navigate that. But uh, yeah, for that, that's kind of that's kind of how that goes. It's either one or the other, and. Um, for as far as like sessions, like, yeah, sometimes like it'll be like more so with Noah, like it'll be depending on that. We plan out more in advance if like, you know, Jake's going to come over and we're going to like try and write stuff. Um, most of our writing, though, has, has been well, actually all of our writing, all of our writing has been done for a bit. So we kind of haven't had to now. I'm just kind of more so like, hey, guys. We gotta start planning content shoots. Yep, all the next <laughs> fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. This has to be like the worst time uh, to be in a band. I don't mean like generationally. I mean like in this the the period that you're in where you're recording, you're planning all stuff, and you're just spending money on stuff that you don't really get to reap the benefit of. Like you're, yeah, you're in the studio. There's time there, and there's both time to yeah pay for the studio time and also time that you're not doing something else. Right? There's an opportunity cost associated with it. Uh, and similar with yeah, planning content stuff, all the all the other planning that goes into a release. Like it, it seems like this is the the hardest time to be in a band. Is this like before the storm kind of thing? Yeah, it. I mean, it kind of sucks, but like, I'm really excited. I I feel like we have something special with this one, and like, we wanted to be done, kind of a, a while before, you know, now. Yeah. <laughs> but we've just been. We also wanted to have like at least another song or two out by this time of the year, but we kind of just like got to the point where we were like, okay, we want to go back and like rework some stuff. And there's like some vocal stuff that we also want to go back and rework. So mm -hmm. I think we've kind of driven ourselves crazy, um, <laughs> but like the good kind of crazy. Sure. We just kind of are just very like, this is our baby. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure we have everything right. Uh, when are ideas done? So this is something I'm always struggling with myself, right? Like I think in the context of a video, like 
I could edit any video for a million hours. Like it seems like yeah. there's an infinite level of tweaking I can do. And I got advice at some point that I is imperfect, but it's really helpful for me that most ideas are done at 80% and not that we should quit four fifths of the way through the project, but that like, once you've reached like this critical mass, like we're not really changing people's perceptions, right? In the context yeah. of a music video, like I can adjust this shade of blue forever. Yeah. Most people don't even care if it's blue. They just saw Sean Dalkey and it's yeah. like, cool, it's Sean. And they didn't think that he was in a blue room. They didn't think about the color of the blue or if his, uh, I'm thinking of the Love Mistakes music video, like I had trouble getting all like the people's silhouettes to be the same like shade of black against the blue. And it's like, li I guarantee no one watched that video was like, his silhouette was too dark. Like yeah. that's just not a thought, but I'll, it's tell, so you, much time. I'll yeah. tell you right now, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> think that. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. So. Um, but yeah, in the context of a song, it sounds, yeah, you guys are driven yourself crazy. Like when is this thing done? When can you kick your feet up? And uh, yeah, I think you could be in the studio for another year and continue tweaking it. And you'd probably add a song and delete a song. And then the song would come back and it would just, it could go on forever. Like when do you draw the line in the sand and say, here, this is the one, these are the 12 songs. They're done. It, it's kind of hard. Yeah. Um, especially like when, everybody like everybody is very critical mm -hmm. and like like our band is like very like okay like we can we can do this better and just like always like trying to improve mm -hmm. um and really never that stopping yeah so it, it's kind of hard but um we eventually came to that conclusion so now we're just kind of finishing some vocal stuff mm -hmm. but um I kind of lost my train of thought. Oh, as far as like um, like songs being like replaced or taken off, like we had like we had two or three that were going to be on that we were like, ah, well, we're going to save these because these don't really now fit with the other like eight songs mm -hmm. that are done. And like one of them was already tracked too, and we were like, ah. Oh. <laughs> Didn't catch that one. But. That's a mess. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't have any reference for that, right? I think in the context of a music video, I'm always kind of working on one thing. And sometimes there's a, yeah, we're working on three videos. But even then, they're three separate things. I'm never. It's not like an album where I'm waiting to release these as a package. And mm -hmm. that makes an album seem so stressful to me. Like, because I, is this your first LP, I guess, is the place? So for, for Noah, yeah. Okay. Um, for me, no. I've done two with As Within. Okay. Um. This is technically Noah's third attempt at an LP. Okay. <laughs> um, which, like, if you want to go into detail on that, I'll go in. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's dive, yeah. So the first one that we were going to do, um, like, when we released, a, I think we put out, like, five singles from, like, 2019 to 2021. Mm -hmm. um, that stuff was all supposed to be on an album that we had pretty much, we had most of it recorded. Um uh, and that was back before Dale or Jake were in the band. Um, and then our, our guitar player, Danny, ended up leaving before any of that was finished. Um, and, you know, we had some creative disagreements. But at the end of the day, when it was all said and done, you know, we didn't lose a friend because yeah. of it. So, you know, that's that's good. But, that's the best way, yeah. Uh, when he ended up leaving, we kind of, you know, decided, well, like, he wrote most of this stuff, so we kind of don't really want to put it out if he left. And then, like, you know, we did have disagreements prior, so let's try and let's try and write our own yeah. now. Yeah. And so we were like, okay, cool, we're gonna do that. And then, so Eternal Lung, like that EP, that was supposed to be twelve songs. Interesting. And so we had we had like we had written like probably close to thirty songs. That's always the case over That's like the pandemic, yeah. like and. Because, you know, we couldn't go anywhere. So it was just like every day it was just like, oh, here's a new one. Here's a new one. Uh, oh, Sam, here's a new one. Dale, he's got a new one. Yeah. So it was like, it was like, wow. OK, cool. And then we were like, OK, now we have to narrow down to 12. So then we finally did that. And then we started recording. And then we were like, ah, the one half is like really heavy and the other half is more melodic. So we were like, okay, we'll do two EPs because albums are out of fashion. <laughs> yep. And then, you know, we did the first one, which is what ended up coming out. It was Eternal Lung. And then we never did the second one because we were like, by the time we got to, you know, like, oh, yeah, we should go record this. We were like, ah, we could do better. Next, yeah. So was Eternal Lung the heavier or the more melodic half? The more melodic half. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so would you say that the, the heavier stuff got consumed into what we'll be seeing next? Is that kind of the next step here? Um. 
none of those ideas made it. And, but okay. like we, yeah, this one is definitely like. There's a lot of really heavy stuff, and like all the heavy parts hit really hard. And then like there's also some of the like most melodic and softest stuff we've ever done. So it's definitely a very dynamic. That's an exciting release for us. Exciting. Uh Exciting, I don't know, overview for me to look at too yeah. and try and yeah, uh, imagine what will be coming from you guys. Uh, how is the album different from an EP then? So you have some experience with a full length album, but it seems like, a yeah, in the context of me in a music video, it's like I'm always doing one thing. In EP, I can kind of imagine bundling three, but by the time we're getting to 10 or 12 ideas, it seems insane to me. Like, is that a process that you feel comfortable in now or is it still like an overwhelming thing to try and get all this shit <laughs> to fit together? It's, uh, I think it kind of is like, it's like I have the experience of it, but it always kind of feels dependent on what we're trying to do. If like, you know, OK, are we trying to deliver 10 to 12 songs that flow continuously and almost feel like one track and it's a concept record? Or are we going to kind of, you know, like have transitions to songs, but like not have it feel like um, I, I saw an interview where um Courtney from Spirit Box was talking about uh, the new EP they dropped, The Fear of Fear. Mm -hmm. She was like, I didn't want to tell anybody this was a concept uh, EP. I wanted to see if people would figure it out um, and, you know, kind of catch it. And so now that I'm kind of saying this, you know, hopefully now people catch it. And I was like, oh, that's like really interesting because now that she said that, listening to it from start to finish, it very much is, it feels like a concept. Um, so I guess kind of, yeah, what I'm trying to get across is like, it depends because I think if you're trying to do like something that is a full concept and flows that way, especially if it's an album, I feel like that's a lot more stressful, which I haven't really done. So, yeah, I uh, I listened to Ice Nine Kills this morning, and I had the thought that like uh, by by becoming a concept band, almost it takes so much stress off of the thing where it's like they just got you know they're in classic literature, and that is a an endless well of resources and ideas and inspiration. And it seems like a really or it seemed like a really interesting strategy on a band of like. Yeah, it, it perhaps limits the, I don't know, I don't even think that's fair. I don't think it limits the autonomy of the personal because it's like we can all interpret Romeo and Juliet in a million ways and the way that you do it is still personalized. Uh, and I think it's an interesting, yeah, the whole concept EP is an interesting one to me. Of like, I think I think if I were to sit down and try and write six songs, that would be the way that my brain would try and approach it. It's like, yeah, can I find a through line in this? Because to your point, yeah, yeah, finding 12 songs that feel cohesive seems impossible if they're not intentionally created that way yeah. um, which probably isn't totally the case i guess uh you guys would be more experts on on how to make things fit together in that sense yeah um, but yeah it seems so tough to me to get to put these ideas together of like no i wanted to make this one song my baby yeah and it's like it, it can be your baby but uh, you need to have 11 other kids here as well <laughs> yeah uh, is it tough then as you're writing i assume there's a moment where you go oh this is our single and it feels like that song would then start to consume resources. But yeah, you need to be aware of like, I don't know, we're only strong as our weakest link kind of thing. Like if the eighth song sucks, who cares how good your single was to some degree? Like, is that a, a tough thing in the studio as you go, oh, this is the one and you go, oh, fuck. Then what do we do with these three? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely hard. I feel like um, with this release, like the potential for singles, we kind of have a lot with. Um, you know, we tried to like, I feel like before we were very much like an instrumentally like focused band, like mm -hmm. as far as like creating wise, we always like really put the most attention into like what our, like what we sounded like instrumentally. Um, we never really like minus Caleb, like just like as like the creators of like the songs, like we never really kind of catered to Caleb vocally. And so like going into this one, it was kind of like an intention to make sure that like this stuff is easy for him to di to digest so he can, you know, do his best on it and ultimately push himself. Cause a lot of these songs are fairly like vocally driven and kind of chorus driven. Um, you know, it's not, not to say all the songs are verse, chorus, verse, chorus, but we wanted to make sure that he has plenty of opportunities to just hammer it home you know it's an interesting idea and i've uh, i guess i put this in the context of like jason richardson and chelsea grin to me it's a really yeah. interesting era of like he's so great but it's so hard to listen to that record and not only hear him like it, yeah i almost feel like i forget that there's other people in the band that it's not a jason richardson solo album because it's just so rich and so dense and he's so incredible at what he does and i don't know i feel like i'm shitting on everyone else in the band it's like no yeah. i love the record everything else came out great but 
he is just such a unique talent that it's so hard to to put anyone else in that room and make it sound cohesive. So it's interesting to hear you guys say like, yeah, we want to make sure we're setting Caleb up for success because if we just write the craziest sweeps ever, then like, how do you top line that? How do you find anything that goes over that and feels like it should be there? Yeah. Uh, uh, how is adding Jake into the band? So you uh, added a new songwriter there, and it sounds like there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen here, of a lot of different ideas. And yeah, it, it, uh, from my outside perspective, it seems like Jake's writing lines with yours where it's kind of genty, it's proggy, it's very complicated, it's very intricate. Um, but that's another set of complicated ideas that you've got to try and ingest and make all feel cohesive. Yeah, we definitely have like, there's a there's like maybe, I'm like trying to remember the song mm -hmm. so I can... I think there's like probably about two or three that are like really techy that like once and they're both Jake songs. Yep. <laughs> and I remember him sending those to me. And I was like, yeah, this one's going to be tough for Caleb to come up <laughs> with vocal patterns on. So I'm sure right. he's risen to the occasion. But. Yeah, no, no, he definitely did. But it was just like, oh, man, that sounds rough. I was like, if I was the vocalist, fuck, <laughs> my job would suck. So. Do you have experience doing vocals? I feel like if you played guitar, you played drums. I feel like you must have yeah, tried everything else at some point, too. Yeah, I um, there was a time where I th was pretty, pretty good at vocals. Um, I don't really practice anymore. Um, so now when I try to do vocals randomly, I'm like, ah, oh, it kind of <laughs> hurts because I don't practice anymore. Yeah. So, but. was it ever part of a band or a project or just kind of like a yeah jack of all trades? Let's learn this too. Um, not like seriously. I think on I guess uh, on As Within's uh, last album, Salvation. There was some stuff where I had a couple of lines, hmm. um, and there was also like we got to a point where our we were just doing so much work in a single day that um, you know to not kill our vocalist's voice. I was just like, okay, like if you want me to do like a lot of the layers here, I was like hmm. I can I can do that. This way you can get rest, kind of you know get ready to track the next one, and that'll be done. And so. And in the end, it, it you know it wasn't even really that noticeable that it wasn't him. I feel like so interesting the job, job was like I was like yes. I, I thought you were talking job. about pre-pro. I didn't realize you meant for like the final, oh, the final yeah. song. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I always hear that. Or I've, I've been in the studio and seen a producer step into the booth themselves before, uh, and it's always a weird thing of like I'm sure it's more common than I realize, but it always does seem so strange. Of like yeah, we'll never know who was in the background of of this song. Yeah, the the what am I looking for the. What's the it called? The or, or harmonies. harmonies. There yeah. we go. Harmonies is what I was looking for. And isn't there like an opposite of harmony? Isn't harmony above and there's something below? Yeah, yeah there's, um, I think usually, because nobody use like, I don't feel like people use like second harmonies or fourth harmonies. I think the most commonly used ones are thirds and fifths. Okay. Um, I could be wrong on that. I'm not really a music, uh, a music theory major, but... That's hard to believe. It's always yeah. a weird thing to me when, yeah, someone like you who is so intricately, I, like, I know you're counting. I know when you're drumming, like, the time signatures must be nuts. And I know it's not 4-4. Four, four. Like, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's not standard. Most of them, at least, like, yeah, I mean, I mo mostly play in 4-4. Four, four. Really? Um, there'll be, like, maybe a part of, like, one song that's, like, in some different, you know, time signatures. There. There's a couple on No Eyes New Album where we have some random switches for sh more so than we usually would. But I don't feel like they're like super noticeable to where it's going to be like, oh, what's that one? Yeah. One, two, three, four. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but Yeah, it's a part of music that I just have no understanding for. I appreciate it to be brilliant. But if you want another one, feel free to help yourself. We got a couple right here. Um, Hell yeah. Uh, I'm always wondering about that. And I think in the context of me of like um, of music, of music videos, like I, uh, I've been talking a lot about learning drums and I'm determined to get an e-kit. I've been, you should. it's been on the tip of my tongue forever. And it's really just been a financial thing of like, mm. of all the things to spend $500 on, like that's a pretty low return thing. Like I could get a lens, I could upgrade my computer part. I could upgrade the podcast stuff. I could, I mean, basically I got this instead of a drum set at some yeah. point in time, right? Like, and this is to me a much more fruitful and worthwhile endeavor, but I think to me, it's like learning drums kind of seems fun, but it's mostly that it's just like, it's my biggest blind spot in music. Like I, I can't play guitar, but I can play it enough that I can talk to you about it, that I can empathize with what you're doing. And I know why string skipping sucks. And like, I can't sing, but we can all kind of sing in the shower. Right? We can empathize with that. But drums are so foreign to me that it's like, I just have no idea. And it's um, kind of tying this back to you learning vocals of like, even if you're not going to be a vocalist, it is really valuable to just understand these things and have hands-on experience with them. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's been something I've been trying to, yeah, that's been my motivation to get the e-kit going. It's like, I don't, 
I'm not going to be a drummer. I don't want to start a band. Like that's all too much, but I think it would do me great to both understand what drummers are going through and also just like enrich my understanding of rhythm and what timing is. And I'm sure that would translate to a music video thing of like music videos are pacing. It is a tempo thing. And I don't, I'm not counting four beats, but I'm sure that I am accidentally falling on the one, two, three, and four more often than I realize. Yeah. Uh, so probably be worthwhile, you know, a good, a good lesson for me, a good exercise to invest in. Yeah. I think that like, I think it's always good when someone wants to learn something that they don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think drums, like, you know, drums can be really hard, but like anything can be really hard. Like yep. you could like, if you could get like a E kit and you could literally just play ACDC. Like that's literally how I learned to keep a beat was like, my dad came home with the E kit and set it up, and then I started asking him about question, like questions about stuff, and he was like, "Just put on some ACDC." God, don't, God. He's like, "That's all he does the whole song most of the time. It's rare if he do, if he does anything um, else." So it's like, you know, you learn how to keep a beat, and then it's like, okay, cool. So now that makes more sense, and then you can kind of move forward with that. Mm -hmm. And learning anything is the same way as learning everything else. I think that's a uh, we kind of got talking about how this has brought like comfort to me in my life. And that's another place of like, yeah, I'm not crazy for spending all my time editing video because that's what it is to get good at anything, whether it's yeah. drums, whether I don't know if you're running, if I've been learning golf and like golf is the same thing as music videos to some degree of like, it's about being bad at it for a long time. And you start to figure out why you're bad at it and you can correct these little things. And I'm never going to be Tiger Woods, but we can, I guess there's a lot of reasons not to be Tiger Woods in this day and age, but uh, it can, yeah, I can keep, um, making fine corrections and fine tuning things. And it's a slow progression, but that, I don't know, I think that like honest introspective look of like, why am I bad at this? Where, where am I falling short? Is a, it is an exercise that helps us in everything, whether I'm yeah learning golf or learning drums. And yeah. I think it all does tie into music videos in some capacity, yeah. whether it's tangible or easy to recognize or not. I think, I think it all really kind of translates like to like, you know, music videos. Like I feel like it, it really translates in just like the, um, the discipline to mm. learn a different thing because yep. video is the same as audio in this in the sense that there's always new technology coming out there's always new techniques to learn new programs plugins so you really can never know all of it you i feel know? like i'm really like bare bones like i feel like i've really leaned in like i think when i started editing video i was like i need to make the flashiest coolest thing in the world and the more I've invested in it, it's like, oh, no, I think it's about doing the meat and potatoes and doing those things really well. Um, but I think I'm also like, I don't know, I guess AI would be one example of a recent thing of like, I haven't really explored making AI generated art or images, but like, I probably should. Probably that's a new tool that's worth exploring. And it's like the, I don't know, it's the axe effects of like, there yeah. is a cab, but at some point it's worth, like at some point a cab is restrictive because it only has one sound. And uh, are you like good at opening your opening your ears and eyes to the new technologies that are in producing or drums or whatever? Or is that, uh, are you like me where you're kind of hesitant and resistant to it? I think like there's always kind of a level. There's, there's always like, uh, I feel like a level for everybody where you kind of feel like almost like gatekeeping that kind of thing where mm -hmm. you're like, oh, well, I don't like, I don't want to try this because this one works just fine. Mm -hmm. But I think like I've been trying to break out of just being like um, closed minded, I guess, for lack of better words mm -hmm. um, on that kind of stuff and just always be like, okay, so this is really cool. And let me like learn what the, like what this new thing does and then I can make my decision on like if this would be beneficial for me to learn or to have mm -hmm. and implement implement into like my own kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I'm not trying to tell people, you know, anybody watching if you disagree with that, but I'm just trying to be like, it's good to have an open mind for things. Cause for a long time, I I was like, nope. Fuck all that new shit, you know? <laughs> is there a new thing that you've tried to open up to recently? Is there one in the context of production of drums, of guitar, that it feels like, yeah, the equivalent to my AI example? Um, I think the, the the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. Okay. Um, it's kind of, I think it's probably the most, like, I'm trying to find the right word. I feel like it's the best thing out there right now as far as, like, For an digital amps and, like, modelers and that stuff. Um is that in the same 
is that uh, a similar product to an Axe FX? Yeah. It is, so it's a it's a cab or it's a an amplifier. It's a guitar gizmo that can sample a bunch of different sounds and produce a bunch of different sounds that sound like all the different cabs in the world and heads in the world. And it's a a way to customize those without having to go out and buy the big new font cab or find the one from the 1960s or whatever. Yeah. Well, it's definitely very expensive. Yes. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you can like. I mean, most like digital profilers, like you can, you know, you can do patch changes and have that all automated in your laptop, but you can also run two guitars or a guitar and a bass through it at the same time and have those patch changes going. You could also use it as an interface. So this way, you know, if you have it like in a rack on mm -hmm. stage, you don't have to have an interface in there. Um, there's more stuff too. Like having it maxed out, I've, I've been told is not the best thing to do. Gotcha. Because it could crash yeah. on stage, which is not good. But um, <laughs> yep. yeah, it's just there's a lot of functions with that. So Interesting. And is that something you felt like you, yeah, you felt like you've been open to learning or willing to explore the set? Yeah. My, my bass player, uh, Matthew from As Within, he, mm -hmm. he bought one uh, and he just shipped it to my house. And it was like almost like, I feel like he bought this for me <laughs> because he's, it's like, he's not using it and we're not really like playing shows right now. Yep. And it's just going to sit in my rack in, in our rack in my basement. Yep. So it's been, yeah, it's, I like got it. And like for like a week, all I did was just like make different tones on it and try different things. And I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> is it like a step <laughs> above Axe FX? Is it a competitor to it? Like what's the, yeah, I guess Axe FX is like the brand name. I know the standard. I know, I guess I'm trying to figure out where does this, is this, yeah, tier past it? Is this like Nike and Adidas, just the yin and the yang? Or is there a, yeah, is there a primary difference between them? Is there something I'm missing there? Or are they kind of similar? It's kind of hard for me to say because there's also Kemper and I've never had a Kemper or an Axe FX. Okay. Um, and like... The quad cortex is not mine, but it's just been at my house because yeah. that's where we do all of our band stuff. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know. I, I I've been told it's it's the best. Interesting. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm always curious, and I think I always find myself getting scared of just chasing the shiny thing. Where I think in the yeah uh, in in that context, like you can have the best guitar tone, but that's not a good song. They, yeah. These are very different things. And yeah, I guess in my in my video example, it's like I can explore all the AI stuff I want in the world, but. If one, I can't find a client to make that for, then who gives a fuck what I can make? Yeah. And two, it's like, even if I can generate the coolest AI image, it's like, I don't know, how does that tie into anything else? How do I make that? You know, there's so many music videos that we've all seen a million times. And it's like, how yeah. do I make something that is not in that million? I don't think that AI is necessarily the key to that. It's, yeah, a much more like structural, basic thing that I think I can get away from sometimes when I'm chasing the the flashy new technology of the shiny thing I want to make. It's like, at a certain point, it gets hard to then zero back in and be like, no, 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 this is all bullshit. Like, this isn't about having the best tone of blue or whatever, the, the coolest building set. It's like, um, yeah, it's about making a good thing that is structurally sound. Like, they're always, they're always at edge for me or at odds to me, but it sounds like you've done a better job of accepting that, like, no, I can learn this and still make a good thing. And this is just a way to enhance that good, good baseline that I guess I'm working on. Yeah. Have you, have you, um, like really explored the AI at all or almost zero because I feel like it sounds like it would be super complicated, but like, I feel like anybody, like most there's, you see so much AI stuff on the internet. It's like, yeah. it can't be that hard. Yep. You know what I mean? Like it, it can't be that hard. Yes. It's just sitting down and like trying to learn it. The one of the biggest challenges is that you're as much as you're learning stuff, right? You're typing in like make a red building with lots of windows and cars, whatever the fuck. And then they're just going to spit out thousands of things. And so my understanding is a lot of the, the skill in it is not so much the, the prompting. It's sifting through this shit and figuring out how to make this digestible, how to make this into something. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's the part that I get lost in. It's like, I don't, I don't know. I guess I don't feel like at some point I'll find a, a, a shortcoming that I think AI can fix. And I guess maybe what I'm saying is I haven't really found that yet in the context of what I'm doing of like, yeah, if I was making more animated visualizers, but even then it's like I... The problem with AI is you can't fine tune it. And in so much of what I do, it's about having complete control over it. Yeah. And in AI, it's like, I guess this kind of goes back to the photo video thing I was talking about earlier, where it's like, you can make a good photo and AI can make a good photo, but making a good photo into a cohesive three and a half minute piece is a totally different thing. And yeah. if I can't get into the AI thing and tweak the stuff, then it's much harder. Uh, but of course, I'm saying this in the context, or the flip side of what I'm saying is the Euclid music video that came out this year for River Pig that they had AI generated is like my favorite music video of the year. I yeah. think it's like the coolest shit ever. And 
it's it's one of a kind that I don't think you could put out ten of those as a band. No, but they are on the cutting edge of it, and that thing. I mean, the numbers speak for itself, right? It has done yeah. great online, and that speaks volumes for how brave they were and how smart they were to make that happen, and how talented the guy was. I'm uh, Wizard Head, Machine Head. I'm drawing a blank on exactly what his name was, um, but yeah, some artist who made that is yeah brilliant. Yeah, and I'm always torn of like I don't know. I don't uh, I don't want to pigeonhole myself, but I'm dumb to let something that powerful and if it, if that really is my favorite music video of the year then who the fuck am i to not pursue that and understand yeah. more about it um so great, I don't know. great band too Unbelievable, um yeah. I, I remember um seeing that music video and hearing that it was ai generated and my thing is like how did like because i know they filmed it because <laughs> i yep. remember seeing the photos yeah. the, B, the bts so like does that like come in after the just the like the video is put together mm -hmm. or is that like each frame has to be like rendered in the AI stuff that. each frame before you put it all together? Uh, not quite. So oh. what, uh, what I believe happened and I, I, we've had this conversation on the air, so it's on the record. So I should okay. absolutely know this answer. And if yeah. I'm lying right now, someone will find a clip in the past that'll correct me. But my general understanding is that what happened is they got sent the three and a half, four minute video that is pretty much cut. And the cut of that video more or less matches the video that we end up seeing and then they send that four minute thing off to be AI rendered. So it's not it's not that they had twelve oh, eight so, takes. Okay. Right. So the the final thing, final thing, yeah. an intermediate uh, product gets sent over and that is generated. But that is generated frame by frame. For sure that was something uh, where they send it to the guy and then the guy is running it through his algorithm and sending them back a frame. Oh. And they go, How does this frame look? And they go, Cool. And then he goes, Okay. So then they do ten frames and they go, Okay, well, in the eighth one, it kind of got wacky. Let's see if we can solve this, and then you extrapolate that until you're sending them the whole music video. Oh, um, but it dude, is that sounds nuts. so that sounds so crazy. It's nuts. And again, this is like a there's 24 frames per second. If the video is four minutes long, we're talking about thousands of frames that are being generated, spat out here. And in the context of the AI, I wish I could remember. It's Wizard Head or Machine. I think Wizard Head. And if that's not his name, I apologize. Um, but that's the name I'm going to stick with for now, just for the sake of conversation. Um, but I think when Wizard Head is doing it, there's also a uh, an issue of like AI is making what it thinks it should make. And then he has to step in and be like, hey, 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 you got way off course here. Let's yeah. go back and dial it. So I think it's a really intense process for him to like spit out a music video and then try and figure out where AI got confused and then solve that problem and then spit out another copy of it and yeah. keep going through this. Or there was uh, there was some issue they ran into where like in the on in camera frames, oftentimes there's like little information of like the, the time code or like the name of the thing or whatever. And I think that like some of those got spat into the videos. So there were times where like in the sky you would just see like 307. And it's like <laughs> what, what the fuck is that? And it's a time code, and it's him having to go back in and figure out like where is AI finding this thing from, and how do I tell it not to find this thing and to find the stuff we want? Yeah. So yeah, it it's a it seems like a nightmarish process that the the product is incredible, yeah. but the process itself is not one that's super exciting to me or interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely now see the hesitation on it for sure. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I think I, I think I really have enjoyed being able to build my own thing. I think at the crux of what I like doing is I like making something from scratch and somehow outsourcing that. It's like, no, I, that's the part I like the most. Like, yeah. why would I let someone else do that? But if it makes the product better, then yeah, I don't want to be the old grandpa who's scared to use the internet and just I'm still writing letters in 2020. And it's <laughs> like. Yes, there's something to be said for handwritten, but like you could be closer with your kids if you just write an email to them. Like at some point, you're you're fucking yourself up by not adjusting. I think the flip side there is I think I've done I've uh, done well to not get sucked in those. Right? There's so many. I'm sure it's the same in drums and in, in everything probably, but in in camera stuff, it's so easy to get caught up in like I need the lens, I need the camera, I need the yeah. body, I need the light. Like there's so many things you can buy, and that that scale upgrades forever, right? Like uh, if my camera costs whatever. Um, if I make a camera that costs a thousand dollars, like you can upgrade it to five, you can upgrade it to 10. You can go all the way up to 150. You can go to 200. Like there's an unlimited amount of money you can spend on a camera. Yeah. And I think I've done well to recognize of like, yes, I could spend all the money, but that doesn't make me better. It's not gonna make anything better. No one else gives a fuck. And so I think to some degree I've done well with that, but I don't want to let that taint me from not getting involved in the other stuff that I should have got involved with. Yeah. I, I think you might have to take the, Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> you might have to take the approach of, uh, you know, the Sunday cave building, you know? <laughs> yep, exactly that. I, I feel like that's, like, along with, like, the the CG stuff, mm -hmm. like, 
feel like the AI generated like music video thing is so new. And if you like can yeah. offer all of that, you have an edge on a lot of people. Uh, there's a, a treatment that I didn't make uh, and I'm, uh, there's a chance I cut this because there's a chance I say the idea I go fuck I actually want to keep that idea in my back pocket but I think this will be I'm happy to burn it uh, it was an idea for a song called Overthinking by Hollow City and we did end up doing a music video and it ended up being yeah much more normal like band and a set and b-roll and whatever um, but the original idea I wrote was based on this concept of uh, the song's called Overthinking so it's yeah me not um, interacting with the world around me correctly yeah uh, and this would have been like 2021 2022 so a little bit ago. Um, and the idea I had, it was like, I want to film the video and then we can run this thing through AI so that the, the person is real and the background is fake. And then we switch it so that the human is AI, like by AI, I mean like cartoon, like Caillou, like dragon tails, like kind of a okay. cartoony thing. And then we keep the background practical and then we just keep flipping these back and forth so that the, it is real. It does feel like it's a music video I filmed, but similar to the Euclid one, it would be like a, uh, modification of reality and i think that is a way that it's more interesting to me than like instead of typing an ai like hey make me a music video it's like let me make a music video and then let me figure out how i can use ai to like yeah replace me with a cartoon yeah and that uh, achieves the overthinking goal of like separating us and showing the the idea of like yeah i'm out of touch with reality kind of thing but it's a way for me to still keep control of it and keep some some artistic integrity i think is the other piece to me mm -hmm. um so something like that I think is exciting. And like I said, that treatment didn't work out, but I could imagine myself exploring some version of that in the future of like, yeah, the, I don't think I'm going to get, I don't, yeah, I don't see myself getting to a place of like, make me something, but that yeah. modification process or uh, for finding references, I think is the other place of like, when I'm looking for references for music videos, I can watch other music videos, but I've started to go look at uh, like people on Twitter who make good AI art, because to okay. me, it's like what they are producing is not real. Yeah. And so in that sense, it's a really exciting thing for me to try and go build because I'm not then referencing the Bring Me the Horizon music video. I'm referencing something that literally doesn't exist. And in that sense, it is now mine. It is now yeah. something I can completely make from scratch. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll it'll benefit me or has benefited me in some ways, even if I'm not sitting there actually using it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Nice. That's what you want to do. <laughs> um, is, I assume in audio, there's a similar thing, though, of like you could... You could, I'm sure there's a chat GPT where you can go write me a gent riff. <laughs> and to yeah. some degree, that would be a more productive thing for, uh, I don't know if I totally agree with this, but for the sake of argument, there is something to be said for like, that would be more efficient to get 10 gent riffs and then you sit down and go, ooh, number seven's good. And you could probably recreate it. And then you go, ooh, actually on the third bar, what if? And yeah. now you've written a whole riff without having to go through the, the writer's block and all the other bullshit. Like you, you were able to arrive at a song that is yours, but... You didn't have yeah. to do a lot of the legwork to get there. Yeah, I, I haven't tried that. I've been meaning to like try and use it for stuff because um, Dave from Strayview, and I'm I'm sorry because <laughs> I'm gonna spoil this. So we have that we have a song sitting in the bank. We have a lot of songs mm -hmm. sitting in the bank, uh, and we're gonna be pushing real hard. But we have this one song sitting in the bank that is really different mm -hmm. and like almost kind of like a Nine Inch Nails vibe for some of it, and like just kind of industrial, and then it you know kind of changes throughout but mm -hmm. um yeah most of the lyrics for that he just typed in on chat gpt write me uh an yeah. alternative like you know whatever like kind of song mm -hmm. like lyrically and what he i don't even think he changed any of it you and he made know. it just sound so good like yep. it, i was like you like you got that for from chat gpt you're you're fucking kidding mm -hmm. no i'm not kidding i was like Yep. Because it, it's all about how you, like, sell it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for me, I've had the same thought of, like, I think lyrics is a great example for me. It's, like, podcast descriptions of, like, yeah, I should stop writing these manually and having to think about copyright and just, like, let yeah. chat GPT listen to the episode and tell me what we talked about. That was interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I don't... Uh, I heard someone arguing that, it's like, it's it's dumb to let AI make art while we are still working at Amazon. And it's, like, yeah. I don't... I don't know if that's a perfect analogy. I, I think it's somewhat flawed, and I think it was from a comedian, so it is intended to be somewhat, yeah, satirical and light in that sense. Mm -hmm. But there is something there. To me, it's like, if I'm going to be an artist, it's fucking bullshit to make the machines do it. Like, if I'm <laughs> going to be an artist, then fucking be an artist and, like, be about it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. That's my own ego. That's my own stubbornness. I think I'm, I'm wired as a cynical person, and I think that has been successful for me because it's allowed me to keep getting better, where every day I wake up going, 
I'm proud of what I've done, but I'm not shit. Everything sucks. And like, yeah, I, that's not me being self deprecating. Like, I'm proud of what I've done, but like, because I'm cynical in nature, it's like everything can be better. Everything still kind of sucks. Everything has a weak spot somewhere. And it's up to me to then find that weak spot and optimize it. That's how you improve in any area of your life, realistically. Yeah. If you don't have the self awareness to be able to kind of have that conversation with yourself, yes. You're just never really going to kind of improve. Yeah. The flip side there is I also have to, uh, give myself the freedom to be like, I'm not shit. I need help getting to the next place. Yeah. And I think part of the cynicism there is me being like, I'll think I can figure this out. I don't need anyone to tell me what to do. I'll fucking make this happen. Yeah. And yeah, there'd be some middle ground there where if I could be like, I'll make this happen, but I'm going to let chat GPT help me along the way. Yeah. Then yeah, there's some middle ground there. That'd be helpful. Um, yeah, who I mean, knows? Sometimes you need help, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm bad at that. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like strong arming stuff and figuring it out. Um, but we'll, we'll learn. Uh, my man, we are past our hour, but I'm happy to keep chatting. If you're happy to keep hanging, if you're not set on anything super firm, yeah. uh, one thing I wanted to ch touch on, uh, we've touched on a couple of these notes, uh, and little pieces. Uh, one thing I've been interested in, it's like the sustainability of touring. And I kind of mentioned this to you before of like, uh, I recently come across and I'm going to be a little vague here, but come across people who in this industry who are so successful that it's not fun to be successful anymore to the degree of like people having to wear disguises in public. So they yeah. don't get recognized at the show or like. It, the the fans swarm them to such a degree or I've heard stories of people uh, touring and then you become uh, you stop being a person you become a fiction of what people want you to be of what the fans think you are and it's like if you're not wired for that if you're wired to someone who's more introverted it's like no 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 don't let me be me like yeah. let's let's talk I'm happy to be I'm happy to be whoever you want me to be but let me be me don't tell me who I am yeah uh, and it seems like this weird balance of like we all I think I started this going, I'm going to be Michael Jordan. And the more I'm in this, it's like, I think that sucks. I don't think I want to be Michael Jordan. And I uh, recently listened to a thing of Wayne Gretzky, who's the Michael Jordan of hockey. And he seems like he's much more like happy, uh, balanced version. So maybe Michael Jordan isn't the only way to be great. But it is this weird dichotomy of like, we all want to tour. We all want to do great. But there's a part of touring where it stops being good. And it's yeah. not just on the road, but it's like, for those people who are having to be all that for their fans, it's like, they're also not being that for their family, right? Yeah. Like when you're being inundated by that much fan attention, you don't have as much time to call your mom and say, Hey mom, how's your day going? And yeah. I think that's something I really value and I really appreciate in the life that I've been able to craft where it's like, I, I think I get a lot of the the fun of being involved in music, but I still have the opportunity to go to my parents' house the weekend and say, What's up, guys? How's dinner tonight? Yeah. And I think I really value that. And I'm curious for you as a musician, as someone where I assume the goal is tour. The goal is on the mm -hmm. road. The goal is opening all the arenas. It's playing Sonic, Sonic Temple, whatever got announced today. Like these are all the goals. But at some point, that's not the goal anymore. I'm kind of curious in your take of like you have toured, you've done, yeah, you've, I know you've filled in and spent plenty of time on the road, but like is there a is there a happy place where this is like, wh where does this go? That is good. I guess it seems like if it goes long enough, it goes bad. And that's a, a strange thing for me to try and make sense of. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I think that like, I guess right now it works out cause I'm relatively young. Well, I am mm -hmm. very young. Yeah. I'm 23 <laughs> next yeah. week. But, um, yeah, I think like it depends who you're with, and I think it also depends. Like, because if you're with your like best friends, mm -hmm. you know, eventually, you know, you get tired of each other, and yeah. you know, everybody needs their personal space. But I, I think, like, from my experience, um, even just in the last year of just being on the road with Noah, um, it's been the best experiences I've ever really had on the road. Just as far as like everything minus the shows, just mm -hmm. like, you know, just being out there. Um, mm -hmm. And I think. As far as that becoming like kind of a hard thing, as far, especially like once you start to become really faint, like think about like bad omens, maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, on one hand, it's like that's that's so awesome that they're so successful, but I almost feel bad for them because they've had th that mainstream success to where like being a person is hard. Yep. Where people don't see you as like a regular person anymore, and now you're just this celebrity and you know, getting swarmed and all that yeah. stuff. I, I couldn't imagine, you know, dealing with that. Um, you know, I, on one hand, that's very flattering that people love your art that much yeah. to feel that strongly about it and about you. But, like, I think a lot of people that, like, like you know, mainstream fans and, like, listeners mm -hmm. 
don't really understand that I, you know you're the person you idolize is also just a person. Yep. You know, uh, and they make mistakes, and sometimes you know they don't want to st- they don't want to talk to you because it's eleven o'clock in the morning, and you're just trying to you know go to the coffee shop and wake up. Yeah. You know, and I think especially in our I guess maybe in any scene in any artist like I don't think artists are always social people by trade. I think yeah. there's a good amount of us where it's like we got into playing guitar because we like that more than people. Like yeah. the, the, these six strings were just easier for us to interact with other people. And in that sense, it's crazy then to put that person on stage and make them interact with all these people. It's like, hang on, I just wanted to play these little notes here. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't like, uh, I think the flip side is there is like, you could argue it's hard to feel bad for a millionaire, right? Once yeah. you have that problem, you're also financially set and perhaps that's the price to pay there. But I don't know. It's uh, I think Bad Omens is an interesting one. And I've, I've wondered before, it's like, would they be happy? Is is there a part of them that wishes they stayed in the Webster Underground? Like I remember going to see them and playing for 150 people, and yeah. I'm sure I actually played with them in, in the <laughs> probably, Underground. It probably so. might have been the same show. Even. Yeah, um, and I I'm sure I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm, I would assume at that time that money's tight. They're doing the local band thing where they're maybe making a living, but it's not like they have homes. Like they're yeah. it's still tough. They're still not going home to yeah. yeah coffee shops or whatever kind of part time job they can do between tours, and it's like. I don't, at that time, they probably would have said, give me the million dollars. But now it's like, man, is there any part of you that would have been happier just sticking out with 200 people and selling a couple t-shirts a night? And yeah, yeah, you may not have a a nest egg to come home to, but you get to keep yourself. And I think that's worth something too. I kind of think about that sometimes where like, I would love that. And like, although like, you know, being that mainstream like that successful on a mainstream level and having people view you in that different way. Hmm. Um, it sucks, but I feel like, you know, you that comes with that kind of level of success yeah. and it's just probably an adjustment, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you got to kind of learn, I guess, how to live mm-hmm. in that way. I think my other thought, though, is like uh, eventually that ends. And yeah. I think that's the hardest part to me is like if – if all you do is tour to 200 people a night, then when that ends, it's kind of easy to be like, okay, back to the normal life. Cause I was already doing that for four months out of the year. Now I have to do it for a couple more months. Yeah. But when you're at that high, it has to end. And at some point it's like when you're 40, uh, do you look back and go, fuck, I missed 10 years of my family and friends and all the people at home, all the college friends, whatever yeah. other, other social interactions you would have had. Um, and it's also like, you don't have that high anymore. So is it, I don't know. I'm really fascinated by the people who are at that yeah, 50 year old stage of life. And it's like, I don't know, someone like Shaq seems like he's been happy to just be Shaq and keep making commercials. But it's like, I'm yeah. sure there's uh, another version of Shaq or another person who is sitting there going like, wait, I thought I was the guy. Like, yeah. Why? And now it's like an insecurity thing that you're always chasing the rest of your life being like, what, what I thought, I thought I was the pretty one. <laughs> I yeah. was someone else the pretty one now. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's a, Again, I think it's hard to feel bad for millionaires sometimes, but it is a human problem of like, yeah. how do you maintain humanity in this thing that is uh, actively trying to take that away from you? Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get to the bottom of it today, but it's an interesting thing to think about as we uh, venture down this road of like, yeah, how do we tour and make it sustainable? How do I tour and make sure that when I leave here, I can come home and still adjust? And there's always going to be some transition there. It's never really yeah. perfect, but uh, I, I'm curious to know that, yeah, how what can I do now to make sure that that goes better than it would have? Um, and not that we're going to end up in that situation, but I think we'll end up in it to some degree, right? Like I've, uh, I think Currents is a good example of like Currents when they were at the VFWs five years ago around here, like they wouldn't have known where they were going to be, but there would have been some part of them, them that's already starting to feel that of uh, the, the love of the Connecticut scene and this kind of pressure and this eye. And it was interesting to talk to Brian a week or two ago, and it seemed like he'd done a great job of adjusting. He seemed very like well acclimated to it. It seemed like he's really done a good job of being like, I know what we're doing is special and that's cool and I'm very grateful for it, but I also know that it's not permanent. It's not yeah. perfect. Uh, and I was kind of inspired hearing his take of like, okay, so there is some way to do this and maintain a humanity that feels uh, reasonable to me. Yeah. Um, I think it really kind of all just comes down to your system and like how you're able to kind of like transition into, you know, going into that, you know, two to four to even six week tour. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's always an adjustment period going on to the tour and then coming off, I think. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it's, that's always the hardest thing is like staying relevant and, you know, everything and everyone kind of does have a shelf life, whether anybody wants to admit it or not, it's never the fun conversation to have, but, um, and 
yeah, I mean, and I'm not saying that about any specific band, obviously. Like, I'd, I'm just saying, like, generally, you yeah. know, there's only yeah. so long that things are going to last. Yeah. Um, so I think, like, being on the other side of that after it's it's finished and then being, you know, a family man or a family woman, you know, whatever, just being at home after, you know, spending most of your, you know, 10, 15 years of your, you know, from, wow, now I'm tripping my words. Spending, you know, 10, 15 years consistently on the road, whatever. Um, yeah, I can see that being a harder adjustment because you're like, okay, now it's over. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of, I know someone who is traveling with an, an act who seems like they're in that scenario. And it's a really interesting thing where most of the, the touring party seems like they've done a good job. And there's one person who seems like they're still trying to hold on to that that thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's an interesting thing to try and yeah get to the get to the bottom of. We're gonna solve it today. Yeah. <laughs> um, hell yeah. My last little question for you. Uh, we're gonna yeah. My last little question for you is life outside of music. Uh, and I'm, this is something I'm just generally curious about. Not a huge topic here, but yeah. I know you're a drummer. I know you're in music. I know you're doing all this cool shit. What's something not in music that makes you happy that you enjoy doing outside of that? Um, it's pretty simple. It's like three things: it's like spending time with my girlfriend, my family, and playing video games. Hell yeah! <laughs> What's the game right now? Um, I've for some reason been like really loving UFC. I think I think it's four. Whatever the new one is. Yeah, I don't have the newest one because I don't have next gen. Unfortunately, if I had next gen, the game I'd tell you would be <laughs> Spider Man Two. Okay, but I, I don't. That's yet, the one. So, yeah, that one just, like just came out in the last couple of weeks. Right? So, Spider Man Two. Yeah, yeah. It's been really tough, like not having PlayStation Five. Yeah, because I'm a really big Spider Man fan. That's the one. And like <laughs> seeing everybody just posting about how good it is. I literally <laughs> at this point I know how the whole story is. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I'm a I'm a RuneScape fan, so it's been very okay. easy to me to adjust with technology of like everything ever has been able to play RuneScape. So yeah, I have no worries. It's time ages, um, but something like Spider Man is a a new one for me. Yeah, I've been I don't know. I feel like I'm a very like bad gamer. Like I don't gaming somehow feels like work to me. And like something about RuneScape is like a nice like I don't even have to think. I'm just like clicking and cutting a tree, and it's like mindless in that sense. And it's a nice way for me to relax. Yeah. Um, hell yeah, Spider Man, a UFC, anything else that's been is that like is it yeah anything else that's been on the cutting edge of you? As far as games or just yeah, uh, for a while I was really into Rocket League. That's the one. Um, yeah, and I got like super sweaty with that game, <laughs> and then I just played it so much I was like, I can't play this anymore. Yep, it's just, I was like it's over. I'm such a big soccer fan that Rocket League has never been appealing to me, which is so weird. I feel like it should be like, but it's like it's so close to soccer and not soccer that it like pisses me off. Yeah, <laughs> no. the craziest part is that you have flying cars and you're yep. playing soccer with cars. It has. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like when I started, when I played Rocket League, it was a different game than it is now. It feels like just with the way the skill has progressed of like when I yeah. see gameplay of it now, it's like, what, how it's is insane. that? Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, hell yeah, my man. Mission accomplished. Episode 49 in the books, Lucas Petullo. Uh, what do you want to plug before we get out of here? What, where can people find you on social media? Uh, I know we got a couple of music video songs people can look out for from all the bands. Yeah. Where do you want to send people? What should they look out for? Okay, cool. Got a lot of things to look out for. Uh, but... If you want to follow me on Instagram, at Who's Luke V, very simple. It's been my uh, my handle for like probably since I've made Instagram Hell twelve yeah. years ago or whatever. Uh, no Eye has seen. We got an album come out coming out next year. Lots of music videos, content, shows, potentially tours. So yeah, uh, at No Eye has seen on Instagram. I think uh, also TikTok as well, Twitter and Facebook. Just No Eye has seen. Stray View. Uh, Got lots of songs coming out next year. Got lots of music videos, content, and also potential tours. Um, so, you know, follow us. Uh, at Stray View Official, I think, on every single platform except Facebook. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, and we have a new song out right now called What's Done is Done. Go check it. Shit bangs. Shit's catchy as hell. Yeah. Go check it on Octane. It's uh, Shout out to Octane. Um, and then As Within, So Without... Uh, at AWSW on Instagram. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of music out, albums and stuff. I think you'll like it. You should go check it. <laughs> plenty of stuff you'll dive into. Yeah, I'm a yeah. big fan of it all. It's all been fun. Yeah, obviously I'm a fan of you. That's why you've been here twice. And I'd love to keep having you back. And I'm Bye. sure we'll get you back here a third time. Um, for me, yeah, music videos 2024. Let's do some more 
animated music videos, more green screen stuff, CG stuff, uh, not AI stuff. Fuck you guys <laughs> in the context. No, probably all. I'll, I'll probably stop being stubborn. Probably our conversation today will like live in my brain and I'll be laying in bed tonight being like, oh, fuck, I should do AI. I should yeah. not. But Monday we'll cross night, that bridge when you get there. Monday night, building a bad trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, hell yeah, dude. Mission accomplished. Episode 49 in the books. Uh, leave a like, comment, rate, subscribe, all those stupid things that I hate asking for but are probably important and do make me feel good. Unfortunately, numbers make my brain go burr. So exactly. we'll make those happen. Awesome. Episode 49 in the books. Episode 50 coming right up. <laughs>